Well, how you doing, all you beautiful people? I hope everyone's well. This is Joe from Joy Productions, and welcome back to my tutorials. Today's tutorial is going to be on... What's this tutorial gonna be on? Hold on. Oh yeah, today's tutorial is gonna be on vocal sampling. Vocal looping, sampling techniques, call it whatever floats your boat. I have five must-know techniques for you today. Some of them you might know already, some of them you might not. Anyways, watch the video till the end so you get a full understanding of the techniques. And if you find these techniques to be informative, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you get notified every time I post a video. Let's get on with it. The first technique I'm going to use is simply chop up the vocals and play it back. These techniques are not exclusive to any one sampler or any one dot. They're universal. I'm going to be using Studio 1.4 and Contact. And before I forget, I downloaded these loops from Splice just to make this tutorial go faster. And here's what it sounds like. Shoulder to shoulder, you and I. Although you were older, you catch my eye. Shoulder to shoulder, I'm feeling bolder every time. And now we'll pull up my trusty contact. I already dragged the sample right into contact. Now we're going to set the start and end points of the sample. Click on the Splice tab so we can chop up the sample. And I'm thinking we should probably use quarter notes. Eighth quarter notes. Beautiful. Click on drag MIDI to host. Drag it into your DAW. As soon as I play it back, you should hear that vocal chopping effect. Now, if you'd like a more exaggerated effect, all you have to do is go into your MIDI editor, shorten the notes, and voila. Now everything that you're listening to is flat, there's no compression, EQ, no reverb, no delay. But I'm gonna splash on some time-based effects just to let you hear what it sounds like. Give me over here delay, I'm just gonna use anything generic for this tutorial. Okay, add a little reverb, something generic. You can go a step further and automate the delays and the reverbs, but I'm not going to do it in this tutorial. If you would like me to make a tutorial on automation, leave me a comment down below. Our next technique is similar. The difference is we're only going to be chopping up the vowels. And since we're only chopping up the vowels, there's just a little more to it. Make a duplicate track. Obviously, I'm not going to do the whole track. Take this out. That's enough. For this example, just to make things go faster, I'm not going to use contact. I'm going to bring in impact. Beautiful. I love that color. The nice thing about impact, if you click on the sample, hit shift and drag it onto impact, it will separate the samples for you to different pads, saving you a lot of work. Add some reverb. Okay, now you can quantize it. And I made a mistake somewhere over here, so let me fix that mistake. Now, to make it even more interesting, you can use it as a film in the empty spaces between the vocal parts. Mute. And mute. Now. Shoulder to shoulder, you and I. Though you were older, you catch my eye. Shoulder to shoulder, I'm feeling bolder every time. Alright. Well, that part where she goes out, you're gonna have to change it. But this is a tutorial, not a production. If you guys already know these techniques, let me know down in the comments. If you have anything to add to it, let me know down in the comments. And to spice it up a bit, you can throw in there a pinch of delay. Shoulder to shoulder, you and I. Though you were older, you catch my eye. Shoulder to shoulder, I'm feeling bolder every time. 
I know it sounds muddy, but this is not a mix tutorial. This is a sampling tutorial. Okay, technique number three should have been number two because this is a real simple one. Just extend this a bit and send it to a new sample one and the sample is right there. Okay, now here you can do a lot of things to it, but we're going to keep it simple. We'll add some modulation. Spread it out. And some reverb. When it comes to reverb, there's many ways of using reverb. One way is depth of field. Another reason you would use it is for elegance. What many people do, and that's how we're going to use it today, is just making it part of the sound, which in a way is elegance as well. And to make it more interesting, just add a filter to it. Doesn't even sound like a vocal anymore, does it? Pitch envelope. What's the pitch envelope used for? Using the envelope to modify the tuning of any sound your heart desires, or in this case, the vocals. Let's record a little pattern. Throw in some effects. Then keep adjusting the envelope till your heart's content. Modify the filters again. Spice it up with some gators, arpeggiators, or whatever you have a taste for. You get the drift. How many techniques did I show you? Let's see what time is it. I'll show you this one too. And don't forget, if you like the video, hit the like button. And if there's anything else you want me to make videos on, just let me know below in the comments. Just don't ask for anything weird. I don't do that, all right? I just do music production stuff. Last but not least, on to my favorite technique, looping. Just basically taking a sound and finding the loop points. Many still have some trouble with looping. I'll show you how I do it. It's time. And since the word time is long, that's what we're going to use for the loop. Bye. Okay, beautiful. Bounce it out. Instrument two. We're going to go under the hood again. Hit the wrench button. Let's go to the wave editor. Select the start and end point. Bye. go to the mapping editor and we want the root to be on A. There we go. The way contact is set up, its default player is set up to play direct from disk. But for this example, we're going to use Time Machine Pro. Honestly, we could have just left it direct from disk because I'm really not doing anything special with this. But with Time Machine Pro, you just have lots more options. Sorry, I was just having fun. 
back to the wave editor. All right, click on loop one. Generically find the loop start and end points by finding wherever the wave looks even. Now, one thing is great about contact. You can snap to zero crossing. It will find the zero crossing for you. And since it's not magic, it still sounds like crap. But you just have to keep playing with the start and end points till you get your desired sound. Zoom in to get a closer view. And that's beautiful right there. All right, adjust your envelope. You can throw filters on there, do whatever you want to do. yourself a pad. You can add some filters, let's say a bandpass filter. Those were the five vocal sampling techniques. If you like the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next week. Oh, no, I won't be seeing you next week because I'm in the middle of building my recording studio. So I'm going to take next week off. But don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when I come back and upload a new video. All of you be blessed and bye-bye.